Uh, thank you, Madam President. I rise to explain my vote. Please. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I also sit uh, on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, this is my fifth year serving on that committee. Uh, and for the past five years, we've been having this exact same conversation over and over and over again in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, we have uh, brought forward the fact that we have uh, a constitutional obligation to ensure that the commission reflects the diversity of Arizona's population uh, in the Arizona Constitution in Article 6, Section 36C. And we also have an additional constitutional obligation for in Article 4, Part 2, Section 1 for our trial court commissions. We've mentioned that every single year since the first year I've been here, and yet we have seen little to no change whatsoever um, in the nominees that have been put forward uh, to our Senate committee. Um, we heard a couple of comments earlier uh, that we should be uh, reviewing every nominee to judge them only on paper, or that, uh, that, that that should be the endeavor to judge everyone without meeting them, without seeing who they are in terms of where their ethnicity comes from or, or what, what part of the state they come from, but to judge them based on their qualifications on paper. The problem is that we have a system that is set up to ensure that every nominee that appears before us on paper is going to continue the status quo. And that's exactly what we've seen happen. Every nominee that comes through, every packet of information we receive, we can not meet with them whatsoever because we know that at the end of the day, it's likely going to be male, it's likely gonna be Anglo, it's likely gonna be conservative or a registered Republican. We heard also that uh, we've been nominating independents, and we have. We've put many independents on each of these commissions. But let's look at two of the independents we just placed here today. One of them is married to a GOP member's daughter. Another independent is, has given money to uh, the, the Republican, uh, to, another one is a GOP, was a, a Republican precinct committee person for four years, yet registered as an independent yet also gave contributions to Andy Tobin, to Jonathan Payton, to the LD10 GOP, to the Tucson Republican Women PAC, to Treasurer Dean Martin. This is a pattern, and, and it's an obvious one, that independents who give to Republican uh, candidates, support Republican causes, support conservative causes, or that lean one way politically, are going to be selected. There's not a single ind independent that we've come forward that does the same for Democratic candidates. So what we have here is a system that is set up so that every nominee we receive is going to continue the status quo. And if you look at who sits on each and one, every one of these commissions, the status quo is unacceptable. This, this, this needs to change. And the only way to change it is to do what we are doing here today right now. We've, we heard another, uh, it's, it's one of my favorite kind of counters to these efforts that we make. Uh, we heard a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, and I wanna read the whole quote because it's an interesting one. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That was Dr. Martin Luther King in his I Have a Dream speech. It is a favorite quote that is used by conservative members whenever the issue of race is brought up, whenever the issue of correcting past injustices is brought up, whenever the issue of ensuring that we correct wrongs that our country and our state have done in the past are brought up. This quote is repeated over and over and often. Unfortunately, it is a perversion of what that quote was all about and the context of that quote. If you read the entire I Have a Dream speech by Dr. King, he specifically mentioned the injustices that the African Americans had faced and that needed to be remedied and that could only be remedied by race conscious measures. When, we, when, it, when it was used, uh, when, when this quote was used by Dr. King back in the day, it was a dream that we have a long way to go. It was a dream that we could uh, judge everyone by the content of their character uh, rather than the color of his skin, but we have a long way to go. We had a long way to go back then. We still have a long way to go right now. There's a lot of wrongs that still need to be remedied. There are a lot of uh, structural imbalances that are still in place today 
that ensure that people of color don't have the representation, don't have their vote, don't have their voice heard. And this is exactly what we are trying to remedy by voting against these nominees here today. We are nowhere close to being in a place where we can simply judge everyone by the content of their character and not the color of their skin because there are systematic institutions that are in place that ensure that the system does not do that. So when that quote is used today, it is not an endorsement or a celebration of our shared humanity as it should be, but it is more a way to justify the complete disregard of the social constructs of race that have been adopted throughout our history, uh, throughout our history despite our shared humanity. It is a strategy to completely separate the social history and the context in which racism, which is as alive today as it ever was, in the past and claim that, in the, that, that the human social application of the concept of race has no connection to the color we happen to have been born with today. This is a verbal, it's really a verbal jujitsu that completely ignores the context and history of our nation. It is a political strategy. And whether we want to admit it or not, whether we want to uh, be, be made uncomfortable by the, by the fact we have these conversations or not, the facts are that race conscious remedies are necessary and that constitutional requirements to consider diversity when making appointments to commissions, just like the one in our Arizona constitution, are necessary to address this exact situation we are dealing with here today. These are efforts to change the structures of inequality that are in place in our state uh, today. And if we continue to do absolutely nothing uh, to, to address this, the status quo will continue. So when we use that quote, we mistakenly assume that this mythical uh, color blindness, if you will, uh, it came from the efforts that we had to fight for during the civil rights era, but it didn't come from there. It came from historically from the parts of our nation that fought against racial in integration with all they had. And those are the efforts that are now using that quote here today to continue that effort. So colorblindness today, it appeals to us because it sounds great. It sounds like an awesome concept. Uh, it sounds enlightened and it allows for the strategic casting of the majority or the dominant culture as victims. And it continues the status quo of race conscious structural efforts to remedy practices that were designed to discriminate against certain people. So the structure that I'm talking about is the commission on appellate court appointments, the commissions on trial court appointments. If you look at the membership right now on paper, they are set up to benefit one culture, one gender, and one political party. That's not what, what this was designed to have done to what it was designed to do, and it's, and it's exactly what we should all be fighting against. Because as it can be, it swing one way at one time, it can swing the other way at another time. So we should all be considering that these appointments should be fair, they should be diverse, and they should be reflective of everybody in our state. It is obvious on, on their face that these commissions are biased. And the importance of these commissions cannot be understated because these commissions are the gatekeepers for the judges on our benches. These are the gatekeepers for the people that institute justice in our society. And these are the ones that are going to ensure that the public has confidence in our justice system that it will actually be just. So we should ensure that we have a commission that is going to be focused on justice rather than focused on a party preference, rather than focused on a racial preference, or whether being focused on a gender preference. We should ensure that these commissions are looking to appoint more women to the bench, more Native Americans to the bench, more Asian Americans, more Latinos to the bench, instead of ensuring that we only appoint more Republicans to the bench. The IRC as well, this commission also selects the members of the Independent Redistricting Commission. And we all know everyone's feelings on the IRC right now. We know that the last go round, a certain party wasn't happy with it. They felt like they, they didn't get what they wanted. And, and because of the makeup that we have in the House right now, where it's 31 to 29, there is a fear that we have, to, we have to stack these commissions to ensure that doesn't happen again. And if you look at the exact numbers of these commissions right now, that is exactly what's happening. It's an effort to ensure that we don't have diverse districts that can elect candidates of their choice, 
that we don't have competitive districts that ensure that those candidates are, have to do cross-party uh, engagement with both sides of, of the aisle. It's in, it, 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 all of these things are exactly what the IRC could and should be doing, and these are efforts to ensure that they do not. Uh, members, it, it's, in, in conclusion, I, race is a difficult topic and it makes everyone uncomfortable to talk, talk about. I see it every time it's brought up and I see when people get angry, I see when people get upset because it's brought up uh, and, and diversity as well, but the only way we are ever going to fix it is if we address it head on. And that's what we have to do right now and that means we have to vote against an individual because the system is set up to ensure that more individuals will keep coming. Even if that one individual does have good qualifications, even if that one individual is a woman, because one woman might slip through the process, one minority might slip through the process, but if we sit back and let the status quo continue, we're ensured that the rest of them are gonna be Anglo, white, conservative males. So that is what we have to fight back against, and we all should have an interest in doing that. So members, I ask you to, to stand with me and to fight back against a system that is fundamentally broken and vote no against these, uh, each of these nominees. I wish we would have seen more, uh, but unfortunately we don't. But for now, uh, Madam President, I vote no.